Drew McWinney with HitFix. Uh, we are here today in studio with two more of the cast members from the new film, The Good Lie. If you guys would like to introduce yourselves and also talk about which role it was you played in the film. Well, thank you for having us. My uh, name is Gay Dweeney, and I play Jeremiah. And Jeremiah is a godly kind of guy. When he preach, he see Jesus. Oh, you follow Moses and his story. That's my role. Yeah, my name is uh, Emmanuel Jal in real life. So I play Paul. And Paul is a kind of a guy who hasn't figured out what he wants, but he get in trouble with the system. So he's a normal uh, young person that a lot of people can identify with. One of the things that immediately struck me about the film and that I really like about the movie is that it seems like the easy version of this movie, as Hollywood would tell it, would normally be Reese Witherspoon is the lead. It's her movie and it's about how she meets these people and, and helps them and saves them and all that. It's not that movie though. It really is the story of your characters told from your perspective and she's someone you meet along the way, but you guys are responsible for your own fate in the film, which I think is uncommonly great to see from a Hollywood film. Um, can you talk about when you read the script and, and read these characters, what your reactions were? Well, when, I, when, I, when the script came across me and then uh, I was taken back by time because it was beautifully written by Margaret, and the way she captured the language, the poetic language of Southern Sudanese people. I knew this person who wrote this script really understand the story of the Sudanese people. On the other hand, you know, as a Southern Sudanese, uh, to be casted for this movie, it means responsibility uh, f for us to really tell the world uh, what the Southern Sudanese really have gone through. Not only that the movies belong to Southern Sudanese, it is actually a national story. And that's why we created a team such as, as what we have now. And so grateful. Well, when I first got the script, I read it once. And what came to my mind is, will I do it justice? And so, and it took a while for, for me to actually catch up with the reality. So when I finally been given an opportunity to act and learning to find a way to retell a story in this format was the biggest challenge because it was a, a painful process for me. And um, because getting the actual scene, like the lion scene, I had to visit my home. I have to remember what happened when I was a kid, the way our village was burning and how people were running around, how I was separated with my mom, to create that little bombshell of anger and frustration for the tears to come out. And, and that's how I was told to do in the movie that you have to immerse yourself into the character. You have to take it as poetry. That's what uh, uh, Philippe was said and Reese was saying you have to put yourself in, in the, in the character. From gear uh, to gain the, co for me to gain the confidence to actually put myself in tears also was, he's always on tears and emotional. And I tell him we don't do this back in the village. So he's saying, look, He's an American now, so he a man cry. So. There you go. <laughs> well, you have both been so active in, in telling the story, in telling your story, in making sure that this is not something that gets brushed aside or forgotten or easily dismissed. And whether it's been in, in your work musically, um, the documentaries that you've both been involved in, this is a story that you've continually told. What was it about this piece of writing, Margaret's piece of writing, that made you feel like they had honored it? Because I think that's a... that's. To me, it felt like there was a huge amount of respect toward, towards these characters and towards what had happened. But obviously, you have the perspective of, you know whether or not this is authentic. You know if it strikes you as true. Yes. Well, that's, I don't know. That's, uh, that's the thing about the, the movie, The Good Lie. You know, uh, when, when I look into it, and then, because uh, there's many stories that are being told in Africa. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's a huge continent that, full of what, how many people, billion people in that continent. So many stories, heart-wrenching stories, you know, where the stories sometimes, it doesn't really uh, bring out, you know, the real character I of African person. So on the other hand is yes, we Southern Sudanese, 
to, to just um, what always makes South Sudanese worry about telling their own story is that uh, somebody may tell it in a different perspective, not their own perspective, and then that can manipulate something about the character and make them look pathetic and and uh, and make the story so heart wrenching. So what makes this one different is that this guy, they really uh, Paul, Jeremiah, and Mamea, and their sister of it all. They pretty aware about their background, where they come from, and and, and and they understand their problem in their own home. And even though they were wandering around, you know, try to survive, they never forget where they were coming from. So capturing that one, kind of make it make the story become very authentic. Well, listen, I, I I think it's a really special film. I uh, I'm really glad you guys took the time to come in today, and I'm encouraged. The the response at Toronto seems like it was phenomenal. Uh, can you, can you describe that that experience when the the lights finally came up at the end of that first screening? Uh, to be honest with you, I have no idea that they have upstairs. Yeah. Because when we came, the whole theater was dark, and then we went and sat down, and that was my first time really watching with 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 the crowd, especially in in in, in, in industry. So the reaction that we got over there, I, th I thought we were well received by the people, and because the film is for the people, and it's told by the people who really survived the war. And uh, what can we say, man? We're grateful to have that crowd of people support us. It was amazing, like uh, to see us people doing a standing ovation and yeah. and making it uh, amazing. What I would say, you guys come and watch it. Go go and get it out there. You know, get your sister, get your brother, get your mother, get your grandmother, get your grandpa, get your boyfriend, get your <laughs> sugar mama, get your <laughs> sugar baby. If you're a sugar babe, you gotta get there. We need you there. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming. Thank you so it much. is a real pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Take care. Thank you so much. <laughs> for the latest from HitFix, visit hitfix.com or download the new HitFix app on your Roku device.